Hello, good evening, and welcome to another edition of Health Matters and Liberty. I am your host, Amina Amaza, and I have with me today Dr. Abdullah Hilawal Kazauri. Welcome, Doctor. It's Thank nice to have much. you on the show. Yeah. Our topic for today is asthma. We're going to be taking asthma. So, Doctor, what is asthma? Well, asthma is defined as a chronic respiratory disease, mm -hmm. which constitutes of airway limitation bronchial hyperrespiration and intermittent airway obstruction which is usually reversible okay. this is the standard definition of asthma but in layman terms it means difficult but in, in a disease which is usually a long-term disease mm -hmm. usually not curable that causes difficulty in breathing oh okay so are there different types of asthma yeah well there are, well we wouldn't say that asthma is asthma but there are different like we, we, we call it types we have the occupational asthma the adult onset asthma, okay. the pediatric asthma, and the uh, pregnancy-induced asthma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these are just classifications. So what are the differences? Well, in the occupational asthma, people develop symptoms related to asthma and are diagnosed as asthma due to long-term exposure mm -hmm. to chemicals yes. or allergens, as we call them, in their places of work. While an adult, sent as adult onset asthma is a type of asthma in which individuals do not develop symptoms of asthma on, when, until when they have reached the adult stage. Oh, and we okay. have the pediatric asthma which, in which the onset of symptoms is usually since big in childhood. So what are the symptoms? Well, there are different symptoms but the commonest symptoms of asthma are wheezing, cough, difficulty in breathing and sneezing. Oh, okay. And these are the signs and, some, and chest, sometimes it comes with chest tightness. These are the classical symptoms of asthma. So what would you say are the main causes or risk factors of one developing asthma? Well, asthma has a genetic and an, environment, an environmental component. Some say that when there's a family history of asthma, you have the possibility of developing asthma. Okay. While there are some that have the environmental factors, which we say like the occupational asthma, which talks about when you have long exposure to allergens and you develop, mm -hmm. the body develops antibodies against those allergens. Yeah. But risk factors and triggers of asthma include house dust mites, dust, um, some uh, viral infections like um, extreme weather, cold extreme weather, and even emotions, extreme emotions can trigger asthma attacks. And so some drugs such as the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as paracetamol and aspirin, mm -hmm. then beta blockers drugs and those so that's why asthmatics that are hypertensive mm. are not advised to take beta blocker drugs. Okay, so from what you've said, is it safe to say that it's it's hereditary? Well it well it has as I said earlier, asthma has two components, the genetic component and environmental component. Yes, I'm talking of the genetic component. Yeah, there's a higher risk of, for you to develop okay. asthma when one one of your family members have asthma. But it has not been proven to be sure that it is genetic. It yes. is it is hereditary. So therefore, but there's a higher chance for okay. you to get it. So how is it diagnosed? Well, that's the difficulty here we have here in the developing countries. Asthma mm -hmm. is usually diagnosed using different markers. But the first and the most important um, diagnostic tool is the spirometry we mm. use, which is a long function capacity test in which the patient sits down in the room and he's put, he has a nose mask put in for, on, on his face mm -hmm. and we ask him to take in a deep breath and blow, and blow out as fast as he can. Mm, we yes. take the, what we call the first, first, expirate, first expiratory volume in one second and the FVC and FV1 capacity ratio. So when the first expiratory first expiratory volume in one second is less than 65%, you are diagnosed to have asthma. This is what we use to diagnose asthma. Other, other investigations that can mm. be done to support asthma is a full blood count, which in which as, in asthmatics, they have an eosinophilia. It's one of the marker in the full blood count, which is high okay. because it is a, an allergic or viral higher marker. Then we can also do a skin allergen test in which um, uh, a patch is put in on the skin yes. and whatever you are allergic to will, a wheel will form in the skin which will show that you have oh, allergy okay. yeah. so then we also do the what we call the post bronchiolator test in which because as I said in definition the airway obstruction is yes. usually reversible so we do an exercise test in which a person does, goes on a 6 minute exercise and the vital capacity of the lung goes down but after giving him a bronchodilator in 6 minutes the the lung capacity will get better so that can be used to diagnose asthma also okay so doctor what are the three components you mentioned earlier yeah airway limitation 
their way of obstruction which is usually reversible and bronchial hyper responsiveness okay yeah. so what are the signs that once asthma is probably getting worse well uh, as a clinician the signs we check out are usually we do this pulse oximetry test in which the oxygen carrying capacity is reduced mm -hmm. usually less than 92 percent in severe cases okay we checked for wheeze in which we had you hear a res in respiratory sound usually yes <laughs> they have this one the chest is usually silent when it's in severe cases we also check the pulse rate because of the difficulty in breathing they usually have high pulse rate yes and they usually have some of them have cough mm. and sneezing so okay so one. basically it's just the symptoms just yeah in a different in, in, in a in an when we ex the symptoms are this are the symptoms as we say in medical are what the patients tell you they have yeah well signs are what we examine to check out to see okay yeah. so what triggers an attack <clears throat> what would you say triggers an attack well every uh, every person has a different tr trigger mm -hmm. well but the, the 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 known triggers are usually the house dust mites mm -hmm. the dust some people usually when you go into rural communities they usually use uh, wood for cooking. cooking so smokes from wood can usually cause that um, ca um cats and dogs are so for some people are also triggers their haze when okay. they inhale it yes. can trigger an attack because it makes the regular person exactly. sneeze so for an asthmatic it can trigger an attack yes then we also have um the the cold weather cold weather like this rainy season or winter oh okay yeah it can trigger an attack also and um and uh, viral infections that's why in children it is usually it is usually advised for them to go through the influenza vaccine so because some child viruses are, have been found out that they can cause an attack such as influenza virus mm -hmm. rotavirus, virus the rona viruses so these viruses can trigger an attack or exacerbate an attack also um smoke either a smoker or a second hand smoking both of them can trigger an not attack. just the person not smoking. Just the person smoking the person beside him yes because he takes in the good as they say he takes in a smoke and brings out the bad thing so inhaling that second hand smoke can also trigger True. an attack um occupations occupations long time exposure to certain chemicals yes. can make a person trigger an attack an attack uh, yeah then drugs as i said earlier such as aspirin can trigger an attack and beta blockers those hypertensive that are on beta blockers because on the pathway the that beta blocker pathway makes an attack possible so these are some of the triggers you can have for an attack okay so i understand that um not everybody the fact that um you have it yes yeah. and you don't properly you probably don't take care of it or manage it yeah. properly what complications does one stand to face well asthma can cause different complications as we see mm -hmm. it can cause uh, what we call pneumothorax which is air in the lungs mm -hmm. species pneumomediastinum yeah. which is usually the, the the lungs and the heart are, are, are enclosed in a space called the mediastinum so asthma can cause what you call pneumomediastinum which is air trapped in the space which they are it can also cause heart attack itself it can also cause severe acute respiratory syndrome or severe acute respiratory diseases mm. it can also cause death as a, as a marker because many people have been there uh, have gotten death has uh, died due to asthma mm. so these are some of the few complications asthma can cause okay so so when one has asthma yeah. what organ in the body does it affect the most well the primary organ it affects is the lungs okay. but since the lungs and the heart works um, together yes, it can also course. affect the heart itself so therefore but the lungs are the primary organs it affects but since the lungs are the organ that gives us oxygen to the whole body inherently it can what cause the whole body to be affected i understand yeah. so what preventive measures can be taken to avoid this condition well this well condition, now we're not just sorry now we're not just talking about those who have it yeah. we're talking about those who don't have it well those who don't have it wouldn't know how to prevent it because it is usually not a common disease that we can say yes can be, it's an infection that you can get it usually has both components so therefore we can only like slow down the progression of the disease on those who have it and those who have it uh, when they are diagnosed we usually tell them to avoid the triggers because everyone has might have a different trigger mm -hmm. yes. so the best thing for them is usually take their medications mm -hmm. avoid their triggers and stay safe and it can usually come to have a good relationship with your doctor and try to be compliant with them because that's one of the difficult tasks doctors face while treating patients or managing patients with asthma 
Okay. So earlier when you were answering a question, you, you said something. And I want to put it in a question. So can asthma be completely cured? Well, this is a, this is a notion we all have that usually people usually our let's say our people have believe that asthma can be cured mm -hmm. but as of to, as of now there is no really clear cut yes. cure for asthma people have this belief that they go to traditional medical ha uh, centers and they are given drugs and symptoms will go and they believe they are cured but there is no cure for asthma even us in the medical world yeah when treat asthma is being managed correctly and very very well symptoms can disappear but we don't tell say symptoms are cured you can have a free free time of symptoms so but asthma cannot be cured okay so asthma as you meant when you mentioned the symptoms yeah. i see there's some sort of um, similarities with that of pneumonia so can you say explain or defer these two asthma and pneumonia well they are both they are both diseases of the lung yes but they differ in which pneumonia has an infective cause usually organisms such as um, uh, bacterial organisms and viral organisms yes. are the ones that cause pneumonia and usually pneumonia comes in with a high grade or low grade fever which is a marker of infection okay. while asthma does not have this component okay. but other symptoms signs and symptoms they may correlate with asthma but in pneumonia it has an infective cause which differentiates from asthma which doesn't have an infective cause do an infective cause can exacerbate asthma but asthma is not an infective cause and the markers and usually when we do the chest x-ray mm -hmm. the, the features of pneumonia are far different from the features of asthma, of asthma. yeah but we can use some of the some of the drugs we use yes. can be used in both to improve lung function but we usually treat pneumonia with antibiotics while asthma you don't give antibiotics except if a bacterial organism is the one that exacerbates mm -hmm. your asthma but they have two different they are two different things but they are may correlate so it is for a clinician to have a high 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 risk of uh, evaluation for him to differentiate the two okay well we're going to take a short break when we come back we're going to take it off from here please don't touch your dial welcome back if you're just joining us this is health matters on liberty and i have dr abdullah hilal kazori and today we're treating asthma so picking up from where we left um how is it treated or should i say how can it be managed well for each patient for asthma we usually personalize the type of patient we have and it's usually treated for a long time mm -hmm. well um but due to the symptoms before in like for the, in 2002 to 2008 the Gina, the Gina, which is the body for asthma, usually used to classify asthma, which has not, it's not being used yet now, but we are going to use it. Mm -hmm. So we have the like four types. We have the intermittent type, okay. the mild, persistent, the moderate, persistent, and the severe type. Mm -hmm. So d due to these four classifications, you can have different types of marker, and there are different types. How people are categorized, like in the intermittent type, is usually people that don't usually have attack, usually may mo may maybe more than a month. Mm -hmm. They will not have the only two two attacks yes and usually the night symptoms usually comes in maybe twice or thrice in a year so these are the intermittent the intermittent type the mild persistent are those people that usually have at least two to three attacks in a week but the night symptoms are usually not bothersome maybe in a month they only have one yes so these are the mild intermittent the moderate persistent are the ones that usually have almost daily symptoms but the night symptoms are usually worrisome mm. so these are the mild moderate persistent while the severe asthmatic part are the ones that cannot even go on to do their daily classifications. Apart from this, when from the severe type again, it, and the, um, there's another classification of genus score in which it takes the markers of the signs and symptoms mm. a person comes with the SpO2 as I told you, the oxygen carrying capacity okay. based on the percentage, the pulse rate of uh, an individual, and uh, the cough how it is and how bothersome the symptoms are. You classify patients into that. So for that, we have like a step in. We call it a step ladder approach for management of asthma because you can it has a variety of drugs you can use. For the step one, we usually just give them what we call we have what we call the reliever medications and the controller medications. The reliever medications are the ones that help you when you develop symptoms. Mm -hmm. For them to relieve the symptoms immediately, we have them. Yes. While the controller medications are the ones that help you prevent you have an attack. You take them usually on a daily basis okay. so that it help you not yes. have the attack. So for the people that are in the step ones, we don't usually give them the controller medications. We just give them the short-acting beta agonist, which is usually everyone, the Ventolin inhaler, everyone knows. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
So that's how for them. Whenever they develop symptoms, then they take the inhaler and it goes down. But when this persists, mm -hmm. we go to step two and we add in a controller medication, yes. which is usually the low dose corticosteroid, inhaled corticosteroid. Usually it comes in, in also like an inhaler. Okay. So they combine it with the reliever medication in step one and they take it. And for those of patients that don't have side effects due to the low dose corticosteroid, mm -hmm. we usually add in a leukotriene modificator or a mass stabilizer, sodium chromogulate, mm -hmm. which usually has the same effect of it. They take it. If patients are not controlled using this, mm -hmm. then we add in a long acting beta agonist with a low to medium dose inhaled corticosteroid. So we give them this one, which they usually take it once a day or twice a day. So, so there are different there are different medications. It's not just one for it's just everybody. Not, it's not just one for everybody. Okay. So when you add this medication to it, then you take it, you could use then if it doesn't work, mm -hmm. then the inhaled corticosteroid, you take it to a high dose yes. inhaled corticosteroid plus the long acting beta agonist. So if it passes this one, that's what we call a patient will have a severe acute asthma, then we usually come to the hospital and we admit and we manage the patient as an emergency. So these medications we tell you each patient should have his physician as a multidisciplinary effect in which you, the patient, the parents, the doctor, the pharmacist have to sit and make a template for every patient because the, each patient does not respond to the same treatment. So usually patients have to comply in coming in checking their doctors three months, six monthly. Yes. And because once the medication has started and the symptoms you resolve it, the medications have you need to step them down, step down until you reach a dose yes. that the patient has to maintain. Then you continue seeing him six monthly, a yearly until patient gets better. Okay, so um, what demographic would you say is most affected by asthma? Well, as the Gina said that um, um, people, about 300 million of people mm -hmm. get affected by asthma and about 250,000 people get mm. admitted to asthma alone yearly in the US. Okay. And they said that about 12% of people in Kano states usually have asthma. So, and but people believe that it is an urban disease that rather than a rural disease yes. due to industrialization and uh, the, this um, climate control that is happening. So it is more affected in the urban than in the rural areas. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what season or condition would you say is most unfavorable for people with asthma? Well, as we said earlier, mostly um, it's the cold, cold weather, extreme <laughs> cold weather are the way where people have usually have a, a, a surgeon, yeah, a surgeon so, asthmatic attacks. Sorry. So would you, um, does cold food, when I say cold food, I mean ice cream, frozen yogurt. Does this affect? Yeah, because uh, yeah, it, it does affect. It does affect asthma because the cold itself is one that triggers the allergic reaction, okay. in which can lead to asthma having people having an attack. So that's why some people we don't advise them in taking cold things. Yes. Extremely cold things, yes, maybe yes. just intermittently. Yeah, it does affect it. Affect so asthma. what conditions? The really cold weathers here. Yeah? yeah, really cold weather, such as rainy season, winter, hamatan. Yeah, because how time comes with yes. dust. Yes. Yeah. So what would you advise they do this period? Usually they should avoid it. Like when it's in a rainy season, take make your make, make your medications as close as possible to you. Okay. Try to avoid going out in these conditions. Yes. And in the, when going out this condition, make sure your body is warm as much as possible. Yes. Yeah. For you to avoid this. Attack. Okay. So for children with asthma. Yeah. Children do have asthma too. Yeah. So is there any chance that the get to outgrow it growing up or well there are researches that show that people that children that have asthma attack by the time they get, reach the adolescent age mm -hmm. they are free of symptoms so there's research ongoing that some people outgrow it but oh, okay yeah so the symptoms disappear but only with advertent management of correct course. management and avoidance of triggers so people can they it's not we, we don't believe that you are cured of asthma but the symptoms are less so you can live a free life of symptoms and maybe some people when they travel geographic locations mm -hmm, also mm -hmm. can affect asthma sure. living a cold extreme cold weather location to a normal weather risk location so you might not develop the symptoms so yeah people can maybe outgrow it but it is not cured maybe you have, you have avoided your triggers and taking your management okay so dr abdullahi for what challenges do doctors face when treating patients with asthma well the challenges we usually face is usually um um, we have, a, we have on our on our side we have issues. Mm -hmm. The government, governmental side we have issues, and the parent side. What in what what 
asthma is a chronic disease in which patients need to comply with their doctors in coming up for regular checkups, which is usually hard. And the medications of asthma are not so, so cheap. And there is this ignorant belief, um, let's say people believe that asthma can be cured and usually, and, people, and parents usually are afraid to give their children these drugs due to thinking mm. that it has many side effects. Yes. So these are the challenges we have. Compliance with medication, um, um, drug, uh, drug, drug, dr drug prices on the other side, yes. and uh, materials for usually some of the diagnostic tools are unavailable for us to use. So we usually have to use your clinical information to diagnose asthma. Okay, having said this, what would you like the government to help you doctors well, or even the patients with? Yeah, well, the government can can provide policies, guidelines for management of asthma, and uh, help in producing of drugs, cheaper drugs for patients to buy because some of the things we usually buy are usually exported Ex and they're usually expensive. Not mm -hmm. every patient can get them and as yeah. I told you earlier, it's a long-term management yes. plan, six years. So some, why we have defaulters is usually due to the price of medication. A patient has taken this yes. medication for three to six months, you can no more take it. You will find your patient nowhere. Yes. They resort back to traditional medication, which is cheaper for them. Yes. Then another thing is for the hospitals to be equipped with most of the things we need to manage asthma. Of it's course. not every, it's not every hospital in the whole of Nigeria that have spirometry machines. Yes. It's not every hospital that have the skin patch test. Yes. CT scan is not every injury. A CT scan is usually very expensive for mm -hmm. a patient to do. So for them to subsidize this for us and make it available for the for the physicians to be able to diagnose asthma as easily as possible and make policies for it to be cheap for our patients. Of course. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Okay. Abdullahi, for thank joining us much. today. It's been very nice having you. Yeah. Hope you can join us in next time. Thank you, inshallah. I will try as much as possible. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Well, we've come to the end of today's edition of Health Matters. Please join us same time next week on for another episode. I still remain your host, Amina Maza. Do have a wonderful evening.